Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, nice meeting you. We're gonna have to, we gotta keep going. Just, yes, because we only have this is our last day. We gotta keep <laughs> keep moving. At, we're looking at the citations here. All right, all right, all right. So you just take your time. And nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. I look forward to your email. Sure, sure. I I'll, I'll do that. I'll do it like in the couple of uh, the next week. Yeah, yeah. In couple of I'll be days. back in Chicago in about five six days. Okay, no problem. No problem. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Bye bye. Wow, very well. Wow, very well. No. No, My father was able to produce geniuses. No. What? We have that the two the two brothers have not been able to do anything like him. So there is no academician in my family now. There's no what? Academician. Academia. Academia? Yeah. Academia is uh, none of them is, is uh, like a, they are going for trade, they are going for... <laughs> uh, it's going to be hard to be... So you said uh, you, you made big shoes to fill. So it's going to be hard for them to fill your shoes so that they want to go in their own direction. Yeah. yeah. I've been teaching... Nayabu? I've been teaching in the school. <laughs> <laughs> you? You've been teaching? Yes. What kind of teaching? I've been teaching to the 10th or and 11th grade. Schooling. Uh, uh, what do you teach them? Add maths and maths. But uh, that is not that is not going to be your uh, uh, ultimate uh, goal. Is it? <laughs> That's not the you are ultimate goal. You're not going to remain a teacher all your life. <laughs> uh, that's right. That's right. Oh, uh, all right. Well, that's it. Uh, now we're going to take a look at here at uh, the Gertine Revolution. See how because Break Mirza Bek is cited on this page, 1987. The, the, have you said it? Huh? It's because of the radioactive isotopes in the molecules. That is doing the all the thing. Radioactive isotopes are worse. And that, that, the, the, everything has to take care of all those uh, the radionuclides. They take care. Huh? They take care and they, they yield something else. So is the case with, 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 with the life forms, okay. the metallic forms. The life form would be would, 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 would take place, and it will vary with, with the variation in the isotopic concentration of each one, each 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 atom, each element, and each yeah. one. Okay, so you're saying the life and the soul are, are started with the radioactive isotopes. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna it think. Has of, to be, it has to be like that. Well, we'll think about that when I when I go back. I'm gonna rewatch the yeah. video. <clears throat> so now we're gonna go to the Gertine Revolution. It's big. There's a big sighting on this page. Let's see what it has. What we've got here. So now Gertine Revolution. So. In 1871, All right, 1871, uh, Victoria Woodhull, she reviewed Goethe's elective affinities, and she says, uh, "This is a, this tale is in a, in a word of the simple construction and genial." Uh, and moderate character of Biker of Wakefield, rather than in the exciting style of Dickens' Christmas Carols. But everywhere the interest is skillfully kept up, and the subtle insinuation, insinuation of a great revolutionary doctrine pervades the whole. And to the thoughtful reader, makes the chief point of interest. So he's, she's saying that in Goethe's Elect Affinities, this book up here, she says, a revolutionary doctrine pervades the whole. So in like manner, in Goethe's book, or in Mirza Big's book, we find that. Uh, so, for example, right here we've got in 2011, we've got uh, Withold Gambrowitz speaking about Goethe's uh, human chemistry. He sure says both. Uh, Goethe and Gomberitz incorporate the explanations of structure in their narrative. And uh, 
Gombor writes his novel, no, novelty consistent and is going one step further in perfecting Goethe's revolution. So here we keep seeing about this revolution. So big over here, and uh, he was his book was reviewed by Jamil Talibi in 1987, forwarded by a sociologist. He said if Merz's book could stand the test of time, the ideas presented in it, in it will rediscover new frontiers in sociology and will revolution, revolutionize the existing theories of human behavior as it has so far been propounded by philosophers. So now we've seen the Gertin revolution, the big, big, uh, Bigian revolution, and then we've got uh, Prado did the same thing here. Some people speak about the uh, Prado revolution. Bill Fredo Prado, he's the guy that was used by uh, Lawrence Henderson in Harvard. He had it together Prado and uh, <clears throat> Willard Gibbs to speak about the revolution in social sciences. And Mirza Big is, let's see, and then other people talk about the uh, Uh, some people speak about my work in terms of revolutionary theory, and that uh, uh, I say here that uh, this is the molecular formula for human, in short, the human is a molecule. Whatever reasons one might have for denying this fact, it can be hardly expressed publicly with, without leaving oneself open to the ridicule of children and feeble minds. In the new millennium, the implications of this basic human molecular definition will invariably bring, out, bring about a revolution in human thought and philosophy. So I say within the next thousand years, this idea that a human is 26 in molecular formula will bring about a revolution. Big thinks the revolution, Merza thinks the revolution is coming in the next uh, 20 years. So we, we, I say a thousand years, you say 20 years. So it must be somewhere in between. It, it, it will have to. It will have to. Yeah. So then, uh, Georgie Gladjak reviewed my work. He says, it's the beginning of a new era or epoch in human history. My human chemistry book that I gave you, right here, the two volume book I gave you. And then, uh, this is just on one online here by someone who calls himself Baby Rana, and he's an engineer, and he says the, idea, the concept of viewing thermodynamics in humans as particles, <clears throat> and that the laws of chemical thermodynamics are similar to humans as well as other molecules, will, he said the understanding straight away gives, uh, straight away gives rise to a lot of issues which actually require a near total revolution to define and comprehend and situate in uh, a human and living, and uh, any new person in this subject will surely inquire as to whether a human molecule has a soul. So therefore, the whole question I just we just discussed there is that he doesn't even, this is a whole, he's just a random person online who's reading uh, the uh, article about the uh, thermodynamic hypothesis of hell. Yeah, so Mirza, for, for example, you believe that in the, from the Muslim point of view that people go to hell? Yeah. Okay, so here's somebody wrote there, the, our, the idea about thermodynamics to hell was started. Uh, see how he's talking about the revolution right here and the hypothesis of hell? I have recently started thinking about the hell and, uh, hell and heaven mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, black holes. Yeah. The black holes are expanding. Here's, take a look at this here, thermodynamics of health. So, this was, uh, this started in, the whole concept of thermodynamics of health came from this American physicist, Paul Foote. He wrote the 1920 article, The Temperature in Heaven and Health. And supposedly, the story goes that, uh,
uh, you can read this whole article, it's a little bit long, but supposedly the long and the short of it was that sometime about after he wrote this article, that a professor gave this to his students and asked them to calculate the temperature of health from a thermodynamic point of view. And uh, it's kind of a like a joke or something, or like a spoof that people have been talking about. So you can see that the number of people Here's the, here's the answer right here. It's supposedly in uh, Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma Chemical Engineering Department in 1997, uh, Professor Robert L. Shamba, though he denies the story, for the final question of his momentum heat mass transfer course, was said to have asked the students, is hell exothermic or endothermic? And he said, support your answer with a proof. And he gave that to the students. And thereafter, the story was posted online. But uh, you can see the like ranking of this, this uh, discussion about thermodynamics of health. 39 people like this, so it's very popular. It makes when 39, 40, when 40 people click like on Facebook, that means that it's going to be. Uh, uh, let's take a look. <clears throat> One thing you want to do, Marissa, when you t when you pick topics. Is if you go to the home page here and you'll go to the uh, you have to go to This will give you a pulse of what people like and don't rank. You just type in EOHT.info, like ranking, and you come to this page. And this is a ranking of all the pages in HMOpedia. Who likes who, uh, in terms of the world, global ranking, liking of all the 5,000 articles. So the most popular article is the equation of love. And uh, six, got 620 people click a like on this whole thing. And uh, what was your opinion, I think, yesterday? What, is, uh, what do Pakistanis believe about the concept of love? Concept of? Love. Oh. It's love. affinity. Affinity? Affinity. Chemical affinity. Okay. It's, uh, love, love is affinity, right? Yeah. What about your, your grandson? You, you believe in the concept of love? Yes. Okay. Love. Uh, what is your definition of love? Love is a spiritual attraction mm -hmm. between me. It is like a spiritual attraction between, and love can be <coughs> between any of the gender. It is not for opposite gender only, mm -hmm. but it can be between any of the gender. Okay. My belief is this. So this one. Uh, so right now it's 620, but uh, a lot of the most popular pages are these IQ pages. So you have got the... Uh, uh, love, the chemical reaction is very popular. If you want to get down to... Uh, one, the one thing that's real popular is Albert Einstein on free will, because he would talk about uh, the will of Allah. And then, so if you get down to 40, when you get down to the thermodynamics of hell, it's down here at the 40 ranking. But uh, anyways, getting back to your article here. Okay, so we talked about the revolution. Now we're going to see... So 
So we yeah. talked about pointfulness. Just a little bit of digression. Huh? Have you any idea about the ancient water containing titanium? The what? Ancient water containing tritium. Ancient water containing tritium? The hydrogen, the, the, uh, hydrogen isotope with uh, three protons. Three, uh, three electrons. One proton and, uh, and two uh, yeah, neutrons. Yeah. Isotope of hydrogen. And the, and the neutrons are radioactive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you any idea of the concentration? Concentration. I say in the in the beginning, there was too much of titanium you know, in the in, in the water molecule. Then it started coming down. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the ancient may have more of tritium, and therefore it could it could nucleate it could induce nucleation. Yeah. Or See, it destroyed the... This, what you're doing right there is, is, is going on a goose chase. You know, like you take a wild goose and you throw it and you, and you want to run after it and try to catch it. But the, so when you're trying to find a beginning point for say, uh, soul or life, you're going to be searching, always going to be looking for a new term, the isotope of hydrogen, the radioactive energy of uh, something or the the, the, the turning of the phosphates, and so you're going to be always searching in your head. So you're just going to be arguing with yourself. But so if you, what you have to do is erase the idea of trying to find a point in terms of physics and chemistry. Because I've spent over 10 years myself trying to find that point, and you'll never find it according to thermodynamics or chemistry or physics. Mm -hmm. So well, let's go. We 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 are working on the hydrology of the third cold field, and they had. Oh, well, look at this. Let's go. Uh, well, let's go. I'll, I'll go back to them. Yeah, we'll go right. Maybe write it on your paper, but uh, the flower is still, still in model. You're cited in this. So we're going to take about what happens when you steal something according to in Pakistan and, and also physical chemistry. Like, say you're a little child and you steal a flower from a flower shop. Mm -hmm. How do you know that's wrong from the point of view of the laws of physics and chemistry? So Mirza is cited here. Let's see what he has to say about this. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, because when you're a little child, you want to know what's the difference between right and wrong. Because all little children, they still at least once or twice. Yeah. Because they have to learn. Here's the. Uh, this was a model I thought up uh, uh, with one of my uh, a lady friend who was staying with me. Her little daughter, she was uh, Muslim, but she was being raised by Christian. She was Muslim, but living in America, and uh, her mother, uh, uh, she was raised by Christian parents, but her mother didn't believe in God. So she was asking her mother, how do you explain right from wrong in terms of not, not having no belief in God? So I thought up this one here for the, uh, to help her little daughter explain. So here we have, here we have a hypothetical scenario where a child, a girl picks a flower out in the in the in the, in the wilderness. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Most people would say. But here we have the scenario where this is a someone's business, the you know, flower shop. And she's walking along, and she takes a flower. She doesn't know she's stealing, but her mother hasn't explained to her that she's taken away from the livelihood or business of the person, mm. and that's going to affect their their savings for their family. And so there's something that's wrong about that according to the yeah. universe. So the idea here is that when you, in this case, this is the system, the girl, the flower shop, and the boundary of the system here. So anytime you define thermodynamics, you always have to define it in terms of the system, because that's what thermodynamics is based on. So in this case, when she steals the flower, the universe, the system grows cold. And that means that free energy has to be go inward out into the system. That shows a, it's a positive, uh, the reaction shows a increase in give the differential that gives free energy according to the view of the universe. Because uh, when the store owner comes home and finds out all their flowers are stolen, they grow cold on the inside and they feel they, lo they don't have enough money to feed their family. Mm -hmm. But the little girl, that's the extreme example. Yeah. This is just a simple example. But there's a small little differential change that gives free energy that goes into the system that is absorbed. And on the other case here, if the girl picks a flower, we would think that this is a spontaneous reaction 
she gives it, say, to her grandmother, and the grandmother's happy, and this kind of releases the free energy out of the system. Okay. So let's see what MRSA has to say about this whole thing. Okay, so according to this, according to this diagram, if any th any bad thing happens or if we do any sin, yeah. so the, the Gibbs energy will yeah. be inwards yeah. in our system. Mm -hmm. So it's according to like that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, but uh, what you what you'll find is that uh, in nature, the Gibbs those are called uh, endergonic. Endo means gonic means work. That's okay. the G. It's a measure of that work, okay. and endo means going inward, and okay. that's the that's the unnat that unnatural reaction, the morally wrong type of phenomenon. Mm -hmm. The other one is exergonic. Oh. Uh, gonic means work is the Gibbs free energy, and exo means going outward. So oh. those are natural or morally good things. Oh. But what you'll find in nature is that the two things are mixed together, because the the exergonic reactions they they release energy, yes. and they drive the uh, the endergonic reactions. So that way, there's always going to be a little bit of evil in the. Uh, that's why there's always going to be a, in any society. There's a certain 10, 20 percent of people that are going to be stealing and causing trouble and yes. things like that. <clears throat> but uh, going forward here, in Mirza Big, 1970, 87. What's he say about this? You say, uh, he, in your new dimensions, you were discussing morality in loose general terms in the context of Gibbs free energies. And social chemical reactions and social mixing, mm -hmm. much of which, much of the discussion ever was clogged with references to a Muhammad Ali Grant. We've talked about that yesterday. We talked about your equation for morality, the function of the three things. Yeah. So we 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 covered that yesterday. But here you can see Mark James drew up a diagram here of uh, what I was just talking about the flower steel example. He says you can measure. The Gibbs free energy in terms of evil, like we just discussed, and also the Gibbs free energy in terms of good, which is a function of the, uh, here's the chemical elements, second law of thermodynamics. You can see he's, he's uh, he wasn't fully understand what he was doing, like you or I are doing, but you can see he's kind of like struggling to understand uh, good and evil in terms of thermodynamics. So you can see this is kind of interesting. But, uh, Let's go to your next citation here. See, you look at this one here. I think we, I think I've got your IQ ranked already, Mirza. This IQs exist. Of, you already listed here. Let's go see what your IQ is. Let's see. Where's this coming here? Where's the big? Where's he at here? Oh, I agree. Coming here. This is ranking of the top. The following is the work in progress listing of smattering of known existent thinkers with or without genius IQ range citations, gates to real time evaluation of intellectual level in respect to the soberness of respect of analysis in comparison to the top 500 geniuses of history. So we got Christopher Rada, you know, he did the same theory as you. We talked about his uh, physics of relationship. He was already cited with an IQ in age 16, with an IQ of 225, and he ended up, uh, in, at age 13, he set the world record for setting the uh, highest score, the youngest person ever to set the highest score on the, the physics Olympiad contest. And uh, he's a very, he's pretty, uh, Steve, there's, so Steven Weinberg, he's the one we just talked about, that did the point, the uh, point listeners not model. That's his picture right there. So he's scored with 185. Elon Musk, the person who uh, formed Tesla, is ranked in a 190. So these, sorry, so these are the rankings of the highest IQ level, those who have the highest IQ level? That, that, are, that are walking on the planet right now. Oh, okay. Not historically. Those who are alive right now. Yeah. Okay. If you want to see historical ones, 
Just go on your phone and type in top 1,000 geniuses. Oh, okay. and you can see the list for those. Oh, okay. So these are those ones who are still alive. Yeah. Oh, okay. So here is Peter Higgs. He's discovered the Higgs boson. Jurgen Memphis. He discovered. Uh, Jurgen Memphis was the one who started the uh, Department of Physical, Chemical, and Socioeconomics in Germany. Edward Witten is string theory guy. Terence Stahl. Here's Mertz Big right there. IQ 170, 175. He's number 10, smartest person on the planet. Oh. Oh, you. You believe the age there, Michael? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, that I, see, I see things from the future perspective. You, don't, you're, you and I are sitting here, you just live, you, you're here in Pakistan, but I see the big picture. Because I've already ranked the top 1,000 genes. So basically, the only difference <clears throat> in Bill Gates and him is the resources, availability of resources. Uh, he, does, he does not have the, the yeah, resources to yeah, get there, yeah, yeah. and he got there because he has yeah, much resources. You, you, you didn't have much resource, but you used resource of your mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this guy right here, Luis Arrow, we'll take a look at him because he's going to come to the conference next year. You're right below him. And when he was uh, right here, he, when he was 20, he graduated from high school at age 11. He went on to get his master's degree in physics at age 20, and he wrote his thesis, his master's thesis was on a thermal model of economy. You see Mirza, right here? This guy's coming to the conference you're going to be at next year. This guy, the, the Two Cultures Conference, he's presenting at the conference. No. No, the, con the conference for next year, the Na Thurber Na Two Cultures. Nanabu? Nanabu? Next year ki jo conference hogi na? उसमें जो है वो ये आएंगे और इनकी भी वहाँ पे ये लोग आएंगे अच्छा हाँ ये जो भी इनका नाम लिया ना ना नीचे वो लोग भी आएंगे he's coming from Puerto Rico he's going to be at the conference when he was 20 years old he wrote his his master's thesis in physics was on a thermal model of economy and he's going to be at the conference and his IQ was cited at age 16 with 200 but this just a loose loose calculation so in my opinion you're ranked more intelligent than him because I've read his theory, and I've read your theory, and your theory is better than his. Because he was just, his was very green, he was only 20 years old, so you can't, but we can take a look at him, because he's going to be at the conference. So possibly, when you give your presentation on the, on, the, on the computer, on the screen, video conference, he might present after you. So we're going to take a look at him. <laughs> So he is. Yeah, but how would you rate me there with, with uh, uh, Bill Gates? And what Bill Gates did is something. Uh, all I did is invent uh, a Microsoft program. It's really, that's that's called secular genius. It's a, something marginal. Uh, three or four. For example, uh, the person who invented the printing, printing press was Gutenberg. In his day, people must have thought Gutenberg was uh, some kind of super genius because look, he made this thing and now we can churn out all these books. But we look back now at what Gutenberg did, it's only just a small, it's a narrow, something's uh, invention of just a, a gizmo that makes something go faster. But what you're doing is something that's Aristotle level. It's something that people are gonna be studying in a thousand years from now. So Bill Gates is just small time genius. People think he's big because he